Hi, Student Success. This is your lecture video for Chapter 12. This is all about career exploration, making decisions related to your career. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Chapter 12 textbook, and I'm going to use this to kind of guide the discussion as we talk about just controlling your future. All right, so I'm going to pull this up too. As always, there's like a quick assessment at the beginning of the chapter to kind of see where you are, some goals you want to place for yourself, and what the objectives of the chapter are. So down here, we basically just want to make sure that we are considering where we want to go. I mean, again, I've mentioned this before. Some of you are at very different places. Some of you are still in high school. Some of you are recently out of high school. Some of you have career experience already and you're changing fields. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're keeping that in mind. But regardless where you are, the job market has definitely changed. Even though we are, it's hard to believe, a few years out of COVID at this point, COVID really did change the job market. You know, some people went home after COVID and they never went back to work. They were able to do their jobs from home. It was, it was very easy to do remote. And even people who went back to work, things went differently. It changed. So that is always something to keep in mind. And that's always something that could be possible anyway, especially in certain fields like the health field, the IT fields. Those fields tend to change very quickly. And so even a job that you might have now may look very differently in the future or something has not even been created yet. So you really wanna just keep in mind that the, the fields are constantly changing. And because of that, you really wanna make sure that you are honing in on your transferable skills as well. You really wanna make sure that you have transferable skills so that you can apply those in any context. So this section here wants to talk about making you know good career decisions how you're going to fulfill your dream and just working within those. So this is a little exercise that you can do on your own if you wish. Just what are your dreams and why are they important for you? Because sometimes it's helpful to just write down, make them a little bit more accountable and come up with a plan behind them. And there's some other things like if you were a kid and you, you know, this is what I want to do when I grow up, you might still be kind of fulfilling that goal. I know when I was a kid, I wanted to be a teacher. And so I would get all my stuffed animals out and I would teach them. And I, I did end up becoming a teacher K through 12. I taught in middle school for a while. Can I kind of manifested that? And a lot of us, I think, do that when we're young. And so sometimes those dreams change though. So what what's helpful is just knowing, like, what do I want to do? What is important to me? Why do I want to go into this field? And so there's, again, that's kind of this exercise up here is like, what is my dream and why is it important? Like, what's that background? So just really understanding that, you know, we have goals and why are the goals we want to achieve? When we have that goal or have that dream, we want to be able to then start exploring, getting information. So the first part of this section talks about the difference between a job and a career. So, you know, a job is something that some people like their jobs. That's totally fine. You know, it pays your bills. It allows you some kind of security, uh, but it may not be something that you want to do the rest of your life. A career is a little bit more, right? You're, you're going through some kind of training or education, whatever that might look like for that career. And hopefully you have a passion for it. It's going to pay your bills, but you're also going to hopefully like it and it's going to be part of your life for a long time. So really trying to understand what your career wants to be. There are certain steps that you can go through. And so this next section talks about like, how do you get there? How do you know what you want to do? Because some of you in here might be undecided or you might be like, ah, I think I want to go into the medical field, but I also am thinking about business. You might be trying to change majors. So one of the first things you want to do is just, who are you? Get to know who you are, your personality. And there are lots of personality assessments. One of the most common is Holland's personality. And you're actually going to have a chance to do this with one of the assignments in this class. But most people tend to fall in these six categories. And you can kind of look and see if you see yourself in any of those. Odds are you have like a combination of those. But the point and the, the, the background of knowing this is because ideally job or career satisfaction is at its peak when your field matches your personality. Because if you are a really outgoing person, you like to interact with people, and then your career has something that is very just isolated and you're not interacting a lot, that's probably not going to lead to a lot of happiness. And so you want to make sure that you're matching those things up. So this is like a real quick little, you know, a quick way of coming up with it to try to figure out, you know, who are who are you? What kind of personality traits do you have? 
what is out there, you know, okay, so these are my personality traits, but what kind of careers are out there? So I'm going to show you some places and these are some matching up. Like if you have a realistic personality, here are some occupations that you might think about going into investigative and all the way through. So things to think about again, this is mostly if you are not decided yet, or if you are decided, even trying to look to see, okay, is the career I'm going into kind of fit into that category? Does it match with my personality? <clears throat> And then other things you want to look at, I'm going to show you a couple of these, to investigate career information. Own it online. When you go here, up in, <clears throat> excuse me, up in the top right hand corner, I'm just going to use physical therapy as an example. I'm going to click onto physical therapy and I want to try to find the one that matches what I might be going towards. I'm going to click physical therapy assistant. And then it's going to give me this page. And so almost a little overwhelming because there's a lot of information But it goes through and it says, okay, if you're thinking about this field, these are the types of things that you're going to have to do. This is the technology that you need during your workday, the activities, um, where you might work, some credentials and train. I mean, lots of information. I, I said sometimes it's a little overwhelming, but it's a really good place to look, you know, 84% of people in this field have an associate's degree. So you can kind of see, do I have to go and get another degree? Well, probably not in this field. People who are these type of personalities tend to go into physical therapy. So it's a really very informative. And you can go through and you know, look through a little bit more in detail. So this is a great site to start getting kind of that, that information. Another one is the bls.gov. So I'm going to do the same thing like up here, maybe, there we go, physical therapy, I'm going to search for it. This one is almost a little bit more like user friendly, if you will, because I feel like it's nice and neat and it doesn't seem so quite overwhelming. So here's a quick snapshot, you know, what people in this field tend to make, what kind of information, um, education they have, the number of jobs. So I can go ahead and click and find out more information on each of these. What am I going to do as a physical therapist? Um, where am I going to work? How do I become one? So this is actual physical therapist, not a physical therapy assistant. So that's why you'll see like the difference in the degree here. Um, what kind of education, licensures, registrations, how much am I going to make? This is a good running here, pay outlook. If your job is projected to, you know, double digits, you know, 10% and higher, it's probably a growing field, which is a good thing. If you have a lower, you know, some of these like under 10%, it just might mean the field is kind of competitive. And so you want to keep that in mind. So there's some data here, some similar occupations and some more info. So this is a really nice site. I'm going to show you one more place. On our homepage, if you scroll down on career coach, and you're going to, again, you're going to have to use this eventually. I'm going to go ahead and click on careers and I'm going to go to search. I'm going to type in again. I'm just going to stay consistent. Physical therapy. And here it is, physical therapy assistant. This is our career website through our career services here at the college. So it's a nice quick snapshot how much I can make, how many job openings. And then there's a direct link to the program that's connected to this right here at the college. So you can get information like right away, like, okay, this is the field I'm interested in. What degree is here at the college? But you can also go through the different tabs up here and it's going to give you more information like the tasks, the education, um, what soft skills as well as technical skills you're going to need. These soft skills, transferable skills that you're going to need no matter what field you're in, you know, communication is important. Working with others is important. All of those things. You can also look and see the wage, you know, how much you're going to make around the halfway part of your career, upper part, employment projection. So this one is kind of trending upward, which is a good thing to see. Similar careers and then live job postings. Who is currently looking for people in this field? And you can click on there and it'll take you out to, um, you, sometimes it's Indeed, sometimes it's different resources, but you can look and see what jobs are out there right now and you can start kind of getting your resume to reflect some of these verbs and some of these wordings that they use now so that your resume is kind of ready to go. So those are three great sites to start doing some career exploration, right? Really looking at 
what is out there? What do I need to know or do or have to go into this career? Because it's always best to be as informed as possible. So some other things besides your personality and then general career research, you know, you need to also look at other things. You know what? If I'm getting into a field that is a really low pay at the beginning, but there's a more pay in the end, is that going to impact me now? Can I deal with that? Um, am I going to have to relocate? How is this going to impact me personally? And then some other things like after you leave here at this school, what else are you going to do? Do you have to think about other degrees? Do you want to start networking, getting uh, connected to, to professionals in the field? So all of these will go through kind of what to do as you are really doing this career exploration. Again, some of you have already done all this work because you've declared a major. Speaking of major, once you've done some career exploration, then you wanna know, okay, what major does that link up with? I wanna go into business, but what options are there for a major? I wanna go into healthcare, but what type of majors are there? So you really wanna make sure that you're choosing your major very carefully. It is a big decision, although a lot of college students actually do change their majors three to four times. Um, it, it's a common thing to see that students change their major quite often. So you want to look through and really understand what is going to be expected of you. If you're not sure about your major, there are other ways to kind of think about it. Again, like, what do you like to do for fun? What, what skills do you have? Talk to other people. Don't let other people decide for you, but talk to other people who might be in different fields to see like, hey, you know, what is it like to be a nurse? What is it like to be a teacher? So really look at, you know, all your different options. I would like to also show you, I'm gonna go back to Stark State's website. Whenever you go into the main page under academics, career communities, you can see a whole list of information here. And let's say you do want to go into business. We'll just click on that. This is going to give you like an overview of information for anyone in the business area, some contact, some general skills and knowledge, the types of careers in the business field. And then down here are all the majors that Stark State has in the business field. So if you click on whatever one you want to go into, it'll take you to a page that's a little bit more specific, again, a more specific contact person, some overview information, but then you also want to make sure that you are, um, I'm going to click into one more specific. You're going to look at your courses and this will show up like a program plan. We're actually going to use this in a little bit for an assignment, but you, you can see like all the classes you have to take for that particular major. So hopefully what you're understanding from all of this is the fact that you just need to be well researched. It's better to really know what is going to be expected, what you're getting into both at the college level and then out in the workforce. All right, moving on. This is going to talk about, you know, transferring. If you're here, are you planning to transfer somewhere else? Are you planning to finish here? Um, and then that's the furthest you need to go for your field. If you are planning to transfer, we have a lot of transfer agreements with other institutions that might be beneficial that you want to look into, talk to your advisor about. And that's where that transferable skills comes in. So here's a list of not all, but a lot of transferable skills, things that you could be doing. You know, are you a good critical thinker? Do you set goals? Do you work well and communicate? So things that you wanna acknowledge that you have mastered and then what should you be working on? Because again, these are all things that doesn't matter if you're in education, human and social services, IT, you should be able to do a lot of these things and you can be more marketable and employable if you can. All right, some other things that our textbook talks about is dipping your foot in the water, if you will. So if you're not 100% sure, or you know, you're in your path, but you want some experience, there are some things that you can do. You know, volunteering, and I know some people are like, I'm too busy, I can't volunteer. Volunteering doesn't have to be an every week thing or even every month thing. Maybe every year there's one event that's associated with your, your field. It's some kind of fundraiser or it's some kind of event that every year for the next couple of years, you just help them that day. That establishes a couple of things. First of all, you're helping your community, but also it looks good on your resume and it gives you a little bit of glimpse into what you could be doing in your field. And you, know, you could also obviously do it a little bit more extensively and volunteer every week or every month inside you know, an, an institution or a hospital or a clinic or whatever it might be. Internships are always an option as well if that's something that might fit into your kind of goals to get, again, your foot in the door, get some networking done. And then you can also look for part-time employment uh, that's connected or in your field. 
ultimately, you really want to make sure that you are starting to think about your career now. I know for a lot of you, this is your first semester, so it doesn't seem like you should be thinking about it. But, you know, getting your resume ready, getting all of these information and this research done is going to benefit you later. So you really want to make sure that you're looking how much work you're going to have to do, how, what the skills you're going to need. So again, with that, I feel like I'm clicking around a lot, but I apologize. I want to show you the Career Services Office down here. Here's our Career Services website. So you can see the contact information over here. They are in the um, M Wing, but there's a lot of research, or excuse me, resources. So there's that career coach we already mentioned. There's Handshake, which all of you should have signed up for if you haven't already, because your workshop is done through Handshake. There are there's a resource called Big Interview where you can practice your interviewing. It'll record you, and then you can play it back and watch it. You know, do you have too many pauses? Do you talk too much with your hands? There is some resume help up here if you need to help writing your resume, need some interview practice, want to look at internship possibilities. There's just so much. And then there's a lot of you know, workshops coming up as well. So I really encourage you to check out the career services page because that's ultimately why you're here is to get you know, a career. All right. And then starting to wrap up the cha um, wrap up the chapter is talking about things that are going to help you again with that further development networking. So networking is kind of forging those relationships, those professional relationships. And that can start now with your content area teachers, with your advisor here at the college. Sometimes it says, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And in, in a degree, that could be true because you might know someone who'd be like, hey, I, I heard of this opportunity. You might want to apply or call. So you really want to start to get engaged. And sometimes there's job and career fairs that you can just go and you can walk around and talk to people and network. But there's some information in here, you know, some frequently asked questions about networking. How do you network? How do you go about that? Especially I am outside of my profession. I'm a little shy, so it's hard for me to sometimes network, but that's why maybe you attend conferences or you get involved in student life. So info for current students under student clubs. There are a lot of clubs and organizations here, and some of them are directly tied to your content area. So you can look and see, you know, medical lab techs, um, there's a food and nutrition, if you're culinary, human and social services. So those are other ways that you can network. So it doesn't always have to be this very formal way. It can be through, you know, peers. So this section talks a lot about networking and making sure that when you network, you know, how do you go about that? And then, of course, the last couple of steps of the career process, getting your resume ready. It's never too early to get your resume prepared. Even if this is your first semester, having a resume is what is going to give employers your first impression. And so you want to make sure that it is done nicely. It, you know, you check it all for misspelling and grammar and then use career services. They will happily look over your resume and it's helpful to update it frequently. You know, every six months or so, go back and be like, okay, did I do anything that I could add to this? And there's lots of different types of resumes as well. Some jobs require certain kinds of resumes, which is why it's helpful to maybe go into, you know, into these resources here that I showed you and look at job listings. How are they wording? What are they looking for? What's the verbs that they're using? So you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to all of that. And this goes through some other tips of getting your resume together, but I can't say enough that the career services office here on campus or online is great with this. Cover letters are sometimes necessary and sometimes they're not. So that's another thing that career services can help you with is knowing when to do that. All right. And then finally, interviewing. Sometimes this is everyone's least favorite thing to do, but it's really is what kind of nails down the job. And so that's why I mentioned like that big interview to help you practice. But you really want to make sure that you are prepared. You do your research. You go into the interview. You know about the organization. You know the job that's being um, you know, sorted through. You look at your resume and then you practice ahead of time. So this section kind of gives you like a little interview study guide to help you prepare. And then it also talks about, you know, how to dress and how to physically prepare yourself and then what to do during the actual interview itself. You know, take deep breaths, um, make eye contact, focus questions, don't ramble. So it gives you a lot of good information and then what to do after the interview as well. All right. So that is chapter 12, as always depending on where you are in your current path, 
Some of this might apply more to you than others. So you may want to really focus on, okay, I need to get my resume ready while others of you are like, I don't know what my major is. So really hone in on those sections. All right. Till next time.